Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome to the Breaker Track. Uh, my name is Jerry Lieberthal, and I'm a volunteer in the OWASP community. I am a security architect and application security engineer for CGI, and I will be monitoring this session. Normally, we would say during the next 45 minutes, you'll be listening to Jim Manico talk about his topic, which is the cheat sheets. Uh, but in this case, we're going to deviate just a little bit and allow him to talk about his OWASP projects overall. So that means you need to submit your questions in the Q&A tab, uh, just to the right of the video in Whova. I will be seeing that and trying to intersperse them in real time rather than waiting for the last 10 minutes. So note that the chat function you see in Zoom is disabled, but you can leave comments and chat in the chat tab in Whova, which we'll be monitoring. So with Jim, uh, with that as an intro, take it away, please. So, hey, Jerry, can you see my screen, hear my voice, see my I face? I can, you're all All right, good. we're working yeah. here. It's working here. Hello to OWASP AppSec EU. Hello to all my European friends who care about application security. This is the end of the conference, it's been five tracks. I'm here at RSA in San Francisco. This morning is my flight morning. I, I was a little optimistic in booking this. So I'm gonna condense my, my two talks for this hour and next hour into one hour. And my goal is to show you what I do at OWASP. I, I don't have power, I have PowerPoints for all these talks, but instead I wanna showcase what the project is and what I do to help maintain this project. I wanna show you how some of the sausage is made in particular, and there's a reason I'm doing this. My goal of this talk is to get you to participate in these projects in some way. And it's very easy to do so if you're inclined to do, if, if you're inclined to do so. So let me start with the OWASH Cheat Sheet series. This is the oldest project I worked on. I wanna give a lot of credit to three people who really started this project. This, the original cross-site scripting cheat sheet was written by Jeff Williams. The original cross-site request forgery cheat sheet was actually written by Eric Sheridan many years ago. And these individual cheat sheets that were not part of a big project, but these individual cheat sheets became extraordinarily popular. In particular, the XSS cheat sheet that Jeff Williams wrote over a decade ago, that was one of the most popular pages ever to hit the OWASP Foundation. And then Dave Wickers jumps in and starts building a SQL injection cheat sheet. And I'm like, we got to make this a project. So I, I wrote a wrapper project around these cheat sheets and began managing the project. And over time, I've had several different co-managers. For a while, Elar Lang and Robin came in and helped automate some of the project. Right now, Jacob Markowski is, is, is co-leading the project. because so we get a lot of edits coming in, and it's our job to check and merge and comment on these edits to make sure the project gets done. But let's look at this. What is the OWASP Cheat Sheet Series? It's a OWASP Cheat Sheet Series was created to provide a concise collection of high value information on AppSec topics. These cheat sheets were written by hundreds of different AppSec professionals have participated in this project to help. And I know we're in a breaker track. I don't know why I'm here. I'm not a breaker, I'm a builder. This is really a builder project. Please don't leave. It's still, we'll still talk about these things, but. This is a project primarily for software developers trying to write secure code. And let me show you what the topics are. Like here's our first one, uh, uh, the authorization cheat sheet, Ajax. Let's go look at the access control cheat sheet. And we renamed it the authorization. There we go. <clears throat> so what's going on? We're talking about enforce least privilege, deny by default, validate permissions on every request and other, I, I feel very important principles around writing secure software. When one of the one of our really sharp authors was asking about rewriting our older cheat sheet, they took my commercial content, some of the principles I talk about, they looked at ASVS standard, they looked at the MASVS standard, they looked at the NIST standard on attribute-based access control and kind of grabbed all the inf all that information and built this cheat sheet. So what is this cheat sheet? Now, this cheat sheet, if you look at it, is actually in GitHub as is Markdown, right? There it is, authorization cheat sheet. So this is all it is. This is this is the content, the GitHub content. 
And if you wanna participate in the project, we take pull requests. What I ask of you as a volunteer is go through the list of cheat sheets. And if you take, again, right here is, is, is GitHub OWASP cheat sheet series, tree master cheat sheets. This is the main gold of the cheat sheets. And you'll see some haven't been touched for 10 months. Some have been edited days, 15 days ago, got some, got some click jacking edits, a real old school category. What I would ask of you, if you care about this project, is to take a look at the at the various cheat sheets that have had the least editing, like TLS cipher string cheat sheet. TLS ciphers have changed in 15 months. I would love to see a TLS expert look at that cheat sheet and give us an update. Because that's basically what I do. I scroll down, I look at PHP configuration cheat sheet. I might have to deprecate that if we don't get edits within within the within 24 month window. But I would love help just to go check this out. And, and, and that's it. That's the whole project, honestly. The whole project is, it's a giant living encyclopedia of not, look at all these GGs, there's a lot of them. We got a lot going on here. This is, and I kind of see this, if you're an old OWASPer, you'll see that the, the wiki was where we did a lot of the cheat sheet light work. I kind of see this as a successor to our original wiki around secure coding content. And we get a lot of hits here. And I think this is a really important project, not because of my work, who cares about me, but because of the hundreds of really top tier authors and volunteers who helped make this project happen. Now, let me show you a little bit about how the sausage is made. What am I gonna do? I got issues, anyone who knows me, I got issues. And we see, <coughs> we see various like help wanted, waiting for feedback. I got about, what do I got? I got 42 issues. That's a lot of issues. What's, what's going on with Draco? Let's go take a look at these issues. What do you got? Draco. Yeah. I'm going to close the issue. Goodbye. So this just doing, doing, making some of the sausage. What else do I got here? JSON web token, cheat sheet for Java, authentication cheat sheet, password storage questions. One of my favorite. Argon2 ID, fallback is bcrypt, blah, blah, blah. Um, I want to remove bcrypt and it's damn 72 byte limit. I agree with that. So what are we doing here? So instead of a giant PR, so what am I doing here? This, this person's asking me for the, let me show you the cheat sheet in question. I'm gonna, again, I'm just showing you how the, how the sausage is made here. Password storage cheat sheet. Yeah, I could just click on it in the left, but I'll just Google it. There we go. Password storage cheat sheet. And my recommendation, and I worked with some hash cap people. My recommendation is use Argon2 ID, 15 megs of memory, iteration count of two, one degree of parallelism, boom. And if you're not gonna use Argon, we go S-crypt. I'm sorry, if you're not gonna use Argon, we go B-crypt, and if not B-crypt, S-crypt. And if you're doing federal government system, PBKDF2. This is pretty conventional wisdom for password storage in the current era. I brought in a mathematician from the Hashcat team to help me come up with all these specific numbers and recommendations. And we even see the IETF picking up some of this. Like if I go to the IETF for password storage, right? They have a they have a standard from Kitten. Hey Kitten, what's up, Kitten? And if you would take a look at their at, at their recommendations for PBK DF2, there it is. They're suggesting they they grab my value, 310,000. That's not an arbitrary value. That's math from the Hashcat team. And they picked that up as well. I thought they, I thought that was kind of interesting. So we're like dueling standards. This is European. This is uh, OWASH cheat sheet. Take it, take, take whatever you want. So what's going on here? What are they asking for? Does it make sense to change your recommendation to go first use Argon, then S-Crypt, then B-Crypt, then PBKDF2? Yeah, I, I, I just agree. So let's, I, 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 just, I, I just agree. So let's do it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this right now to show you how, again, my goal is to show you how the sausage is made a little bit. So I wanna go edit this now. So I, I, I'm lame, I go to GitHub desktop. This makes my life so much easier. I don't use manual GitHub, forgive me, I'm old and gray with, with low time. So I'm gonna go to the cheat sheet series. I'm gonna pull origin here. I'm gonna go grab all the latest goodness, right? And I, I just like to, I, I wanna make sure I'm looking at the right, I show it in Finder. Oh, I feel embarrassed here. And I'm going to go look at the 
password storage cheat sheet. I'm just going to pop this thing open in Sublime Text. That's it. And so let's take a look at this. Now, what they're saying is, He's like, get Bcrypt to be third. And I, I'm so happy because I hate Bcrypt. The 72 byte limit really, really frustrates me with Bcrypt. So I'm going to say, uh, if Ar I'm going to say, if Argon, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, if Argon 2ID is not available, then, um, if Argon 2 is not available, use, S crypt um, yeah use S crypt with a minimum CPU memory cost parameter of 2 to the 16 a minimum block size of 8 1024 bytes and a parallelism parameter of 1 it's a way stronger algorithm I like that and I'm going to say if uh, what do we say here let's go back let me go back to the cheat sheet what did I say before I said for legacy systems, yeah, I'm gonna call Bcrypt Legacy. I'm so happy. Oh, I'm so this is my ha happiest moment in the cheat sheet. I because Bcrypt, if your password's more than 72 bytes, it tr Bcrypt truncates. So a lot of the conventional wisdom is to pre-hash or just limit. I'm just like, forget it. It's time to stop using Bcrypt and use something that adults use, like Argon 2 ID. Adults don't use Bcrypt. It's an old crappy algorithm with a limit. Pre-hashing is problematic. Stop it. Damn it. All right, I'm sorry. So what am I going to say for legacy systems using Bcrypt? That's what I want to say. So for, for this is my happy for legacy systems using, right? For legacy systems using Bcrypt, <clears throat> go back. I got to say, I got to use right English. For legacy systems using Bcrypt, use a work factor of 10 or more and with the password limit of 72 bytes. I'm happy with that. And so let's go look at the list now, the basics. So peppering, yeah, don't ask about the pepper. Password hashing, Argon 2 ID. It's already in the right order, S crypt, B crypt. So I'm, I'm good. This is my PR. Use Argon 2 ID, minimum configuration, that's good. If Argon 2 ID is not available, use S crypt with an MCP, blah, 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 blah. For legacy systems to B crypt, blah, 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 blah. I love it. So now let's let, let's let, let's make this. Let's do this. So let's just commit right to master. No, Jacob. I like to just commit to master because I'm Jim, and Jacob's like, stop that, Jim. Stop it. He's right. So what am I going to do? What am I actually going to do? I'm going to say, see if I can remember this. Oh, I can see my my GitHub incompetency. I love it. So I want to make a new branch, right? Yes, and I'm going to call this. Uh, password password cheat sheet reorder and I'm gonna create a branch. I hate doing I'm going to bring my changes to password CS reorder. So there we go. Now I'm in my little branch and I'm like change I'm changing the order of <clears throat> where where are we? So I'm grabbing this comment so I can tie it all together. Changing order of bcrypt bcrypt and S crypt, you know, cause, cause B crypt is lame, super lame. Stop using B crypt with its truncation limit. There we go. I got my little editorial in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna submit this now, publish that branch. And what do you do to branches? Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a pull. Give me a pull request, damn it. So there we go. Change in the order. I'm just going to submit that pull request. There we go. And I'm going to let the commenter know. Oh, yeah, it's just right. There we go. PR. We got this. It's already listed. So now, now, now I'm in the project. Let's go back. So I got my PR submitted. I'm going to pull request. What do we got here? Update the password storage cheat sheet. Let's check this out. Files one. Check my change out. Just a nice, simple reordering. I'm going to push this live. So now I want to, we have so much project automation here. So, the, and, and I got to give like Elar and Robin, Elar in particular built a lot of this. Elar Lang, he's one of the leads of the ASVS standard. He built a lot of automation. So I, so he, I'm not allowed to check stuff in or, or merge until I pass all the linting checks. Oh, I hate this, but I'm going to do it. Now we're, 
So what are we doing here? We're doing our lint. We have four different lint checkers and standard checkers. They've all passed. Let's merge without waiting for requirements to be met. They want, let me, so what do we got? Reviewer. Was re, so they request, I didn't request it. So I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be admin. I'm gonna squash and merge, confirm and merge this. So as soon as I do this, it, it actually, I'm, I'm gonna delete that, we don't need that branch anymore. So as soon as I do this, it merges live into the project. So in theory, if I did this right, we should see that push live in just a few moments. So I'm gonna go back to the, the issue that we, that we just submitted to. What am I doing? Update the past, that's a PR, I don't, that, that should be gone now, right? Yeah, it's gone. I'll go back to my issues, We've got a lot of issues. I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna say, yeah, good call. This is now live closing issue. Thank you. Thank you so much. Woohoo. Actually, I, I got and I gotta give him some emoji. It's like, look, if you're gonna, I'll, I'll just do a smiley face. There we go. Let's comment on that. No, it's not just comment. Let's close this issue out. Boom. Back to the password storage cheat sheet. Let's see if we got this. Refresh. Come on. Push it live, baby. Give me, give me live. It's not live yet. Not live yet. That's okay. We'll, we'll check it out in a bit. Let me go back to the master branch here. I might do something else. Let's see what else is going on in this project. We'll come back. We'll see if we actually got this live. It takes a minute or two. Let's go to the pull request. What's going on here? Add guidance on secret scanning network capture on Kubernetes and fix a typo. So what's this? What'd they change? Yeah, headers to headers. That's easy. And this is open source tools like secret scanner. Is that open source? Yeah, it's in threat mapper. Is this like a commercial thing? What do you think? Should I allow? If you have questions, by the way, if you're actually still here, you're welcome to hit me up with questions right now. But what's going on? Well, I have on? A, uh, a question that came in for you, Jim. Go for but, it. Yeah, the question was, in reality, is it practical to recommend this to developers and let them check when coding? What in particular? All of this stuff? or? Well, I'm guessing any individual cheat sheet or all of them. The question is, should we what now? Should we let developers read cheat sheets and learn about secure coding? I'm not sure if I, if no. I got the question. I, well, it says, do you think it's practical to recommend the cheat sheets to developers and have them follow some of that through while they're coding? A absolutely, because it's a living document. We're constantly tweaking and changing it. And I know it's kind of like, it's challenging to try to make developers security engineers, but if developers want to learn about security, this is a pretty good place to do it. I'm really proud of this series. Again, not because of my efforts, but because of the efforts of so many AppSec people who really care about this stuff. And so I think the answer to that is absolutely, absolutely yes. Well, let's, uh, let's follow on a little bit with that. Uh, as, a, as a developer, I kind of expect that some of the tools I have cover things like this, although they don't incorporate the cheat sheets. A lot of commercial tools actually link to the cheat sheets. I see several static analysis engines and dynamic engines that have links to this. And uh, yeah, I, I, you know, it's not Veracode, but I've, I've seen one or two, maybe Fortify does it. Um, maybe is there something they could do to put these together and say, okay, you guys have to learn what reasonable secure coding is. Here's a whole bunch of stuff. Look at things that are in your arena and make sure you're following it. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly think that there's a, there's a multitude of ways that the cheat sheets can be used. And I've seen some people cherry pick certain cheat sheets and have their developers read it. I've, some, I've seen some people point the whole cheat sheet series to their developers and have them read it. I've seen some people like do really surgical edits that were helpful and then give it to their developers to read. So I've seen people, you can download this as well. You can just go to like the main page and go to, yeah, I'm going to download the whole site here and go grab a whole zip of the entire bundle and, and not even go through the series, but work, use it, you know, internally in private there's an atom feed of all the main updates here i mean like my latest yeah we see the latest couple updates you just pushed i'm gonna stop that so any way you want to use this think of it as just like an encyclopedia 
that's changing every couple of, every week or so that's about secure coding who doesn't want that this is one of the most popular flagship projects at the OWASP foundation right now so i think yeah, it's I, I would agree with you on that and i i use them quite a bit they do seem to change much more rapidly than obviously any of the standards yeah which is great Cool, cool. Yeah. So I, I'm, 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 I'm going to shift to another. I'm shift to another project in just a moment. I'm just showing you how the sausage is made. I'm looking at these edits, the real, real minor edits. So I'm like, I'm pushing my PRs live right now. Yeah, let's squash and merge that. I'm an admin. It's okay. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. Don't worry. What else do we got here? Any more PRs? Interesting. What do you got here? Check the changes. Yeah, I'm squash. Like, what is this? Oh, it's the security policy. I want to actually, they want to secure it. So I'm going to ask for a security policy on the project itself. So I'll come back to that. That's it. I've cleaned up my PRs. I have mostly pending issues waiting for next steps. Let's, let, let's, uh, nope, I'm good with that. Anything else major I want to do? Nope. I can also take a look at, like issues I have my name attached to it, which are like nine right now. I'll come back to that in my own time. But folks, that's that's the OWASH cheat sheet series. That's what this is all about, right? And so it, it's it, it's a living encyclopedia. We're here to like primarily build a resource. Uh, primarily want to want to build a resource that is going to help developers write secure code. It's something that hundreds of people are working on. It's it's a one of the flagship projects of the OWASP Foundation. And I'm showing you how the sausage is made to encourage you to participate as well. Not that terribly difficult to do so. All right. And there we go. And let's end with this. So here's my edit. Using Argon 2 ID with the minimum config. If Argon 2 ID is not available, use Scrip with the minimum CPU cost parameter, blah, blah. For legacy systems using Bcrypt, use a work product 10 or more. The password limit is 32 bytes. There we go. So I just made a little edit. I took someone's feedback from the community. I agreed with them. I made the edit, pushed it live because I'm the project manager, even though that's bad. And we have a little edit that I think is kind of decent, right? We want to Bcrypt is a less secure algorithm than Scrypt. Let's get let, let's let our, our an Argon 2ID has three configurators to slow it down. Scrypt has two configurators to slow it down, and Bcrypt has one. So this is the right thing to do. And we're live. That's the cheat sheet series. Let me show you the, the second project that I'm working on now. And this is a bit older of a project. It's the OWASP Proactive Controls, right? The, the OWASP Proactive Controls was pushed out in 2018. This is an older project at this point. And we're, the reason I think this is interesting, a lot of, oh, wow, a lot of contributors. We're just about to get started on the next version of the Proactive Controls. This was, this came about in like 2017, we published in 2018. <clears throat> and the point was, what was the point of this? The point was to come up with the top 10 list that was 100% defensive in nature. The OWASP top 10 as it stands today is, an, is basically an international standard. It shouldn't be, but it is. It's an international standard on application security. And it talks about risks, right? It talks about things that can go wrong in your app. When we talk about the proactive controls, we're talking about the, the various things that you need to get right when building software. Defining security requirements, so we, we agree on what security is. Leverage security frameworks and libraries. Secure database access, encoding, validation, identity, access control data protection, cryptographic data protection, implementing security logging and error handling. I don't like error handling. I want to get that out of the list. There's bigger things we can point to than just error handling. But this is our take circa 2018. We've, it's been translated to several different languages and super eager to mature the project. And so what we're doing right now is we're getting ready to start the 2023 edition. That's our plan for release of the next version. It's coming up. And so 
we're, we're, we're very likely going to take the OWASP top 10 and parallel it, right? If you look at the OWASP top 10 today, how could we convert the OWASP top 10 into, let's get a list of the OWASP top 10, there it is. How could we convert this list right here into a uh, into a defense list. Let's 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 think this out for a second, right? Let's go get a new little sublime text here. Here's the OWASP top headers today. So broken access control. What would be like the so let's say pro proactive controls 01. That would be um, implement right implement you know implements you know act implement access control access controls something like that right then we look at p what i want to do is is move the, the, again this proactive control list to a very to parallel the oas top 10 so you know implement access control i want you to stop injection um that's two so uh, sorry sorry p2 is you know pr protect protect data right p03 cryptography p03 is you know stop injection i hate to say like an attack i may even i may swap out injection for something better because we're trying to say this is what you want to build securely but i digress a uh, p04 is um do um, design review and threat modeling right and we're looking, I'm building the OWASP practice controls 2023. I'm taking the OWASP top 10, you know, implement good security configuration. P06 is, you know, you know, keep your components updated. P07 is, what's P07? P07 is, you know, implement. Digital identity, P08, what would that, what would P08 be? P08 is software, you know, um, implement. Implement um, cryptographic integrity. No, no, imp implement data integrity. Almost done. PO. I'm gonna add this to the project just so we have the reference, and like implement security logging. I was gonna say security. People say logging and monitoring. Logging. Logging implies that. I'm just gonna say logging for now. So own and ten is. Uh, so stop SSRF. See, I don't. I, this doesn't map super well, but we'll start. We'll start here. This is not terribly bad. And so I'm going to go back to the project here. Go to my GitHub here, and I'm going to submit an issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And say, you know, getting ready for the proactive HTI Active Controls 2023, and. Here is a first take of an OWASP top 10 like proactive list. And let's see, see, no, I'll just leave it there. So there we go. This is like a, our very first steps at getting this project rolling. We're doing it all together. It's a great day for freedom. And again, the goal of this is to come up with an, an o, a, a clone of the OWASP top 10 that is purely defensive in nature and all if you want to participate all you need to go to the OWASP proactive controls group I would love some comments there's only two issues here this this is a, a quiet project right now not a lot of activity so if you have an interest in building an OWASP top 10 list for defense hop on in give me some comments in the proactive controls comment and let's talk about it you'll see some more like loud activity later in the year this is Katie Anton, who is actually I'm gonna I'm gonna CC her into this so she can see me do this. Katie Anton's the co-lead of this. She's fantastic. I'm, Kate, Katie has worked really hard on this project. Um, one, and the other project lead, re, he had his company sold and retired. That's terrible. When my company sells and and I'm rich because I, I sold some company, I'm not yet. I'm not working on it. 
I'm going to still participate in OWASP. That's been my promise to the foundation. I don't want to like, well, if I do well, it's because of OWASP. So I plan to stick around for a long time. I love this stuff. How are we doing? Do, do I still have my, uh, do I still have my moderator on this call? Are you still with me, sir? I am. So there you go. We went through the, we showed how the sausage is made for the cheat sheet series, <clears throat> the proactive controls project. These are two of the things I'm working on. Let me, let me show you one more, right? And I would go look at, at, at Josh, Josh Greenberg, who's the main lead of the OWASP uh, ASVS standard. But I'm part of the ASVS team, and I'm going to do a little work in front of you. So where am I going? I'm going to go to, there's GitHub for ASVS. Let me go back to the root directory for a second. And there we go. We're working on 5.0 right now. So if you want to participate in the ASVS standard, this is where I would go. OWASP ASVS Tree Master 5.0 English. This is the main working directory, and you'll see activity last month and similar. So we have 81 issues. We get a lot of feedback on this from the community. It's a, uh, ASVS discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so let's go look at, what do I have? Is anyone asking me to participate? There we go. Allow list of H, so what do we got here? ASVS 5.1 requirement is, not all HTML form fields can be verified through an allow list. Free form text fields allows HTML to be entered. I agree. Where possible, allow lists. So preferably allow lists, alternatively sanitizers. He's exactly right. So we merged a small fix there already. You know, they're like, oh, Manico, you merged it too quickly, whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, it takes different kind of personalities, I think, to make a good project. Josh and Elar are very like, let's be careful about how to move forward. And I'm like, let's let's merge. Let's merge some shit. That's that's kind of my attitude. So I'm always trying to push things forward. They're trying to talk about it carefully. And I think the combination of both is, is, is what we do well. Anyways, let's, let's go look at this requirement, 513. Let's see what it is as, as it stands today. So go to English. I want to go to 5513. Verify all using allow list where HTML markup is accepted for input. Refer to requirement 521. Yeah, I love that. Untrusted HTML should be sanitized. This is good. We finished this. Anything? I'm going to close this out. This fix, this fix is live in the 5.0 directory. Here's a summary of what we did. Summary is number one, you cannot use allow lists when the input type is HTML. You need to sanitize HTML input with like DOM purify or similar. The change is done and live and makes total sense. I'm closing this out. There you go. Stop the craziness, Elar. I love Elar, but he's like, e Elar and I are opposites. Elar likes to likes to debate everything until he's personally satisfied, and I'm and I'm like, I want to move things forward when experts get good sense. And I, I love Elar. He's one of the one of the best we got. So I hope that our con our constant like different perspective is helpful. All right. So we don't have a lot of PRs. We have issues. Let's. I'm going to do one more. <clears throat> one more ASVS issue and I'll call it. There's no item to check zip slip related vulnerabilities. You're right. Actually, it's covered in the path traversal points.
Zip slip is when you unzip into a directory with past with with files that have like path traversal attacks in them. So you think you're unzipping in one folder, but it actually breaks out into other. I agree 100% that zip slip um, should somehow be mentioned. This is not like path a traversal due to dev mistake per se. It's a problem with updating libraries. So let me, let me make sure that's true. Let's go look for Let me go look for a zip slip reference. To read a little bit about it before I get to yes, Nick's got some good stuff on this. So, what's the fix though? Are you vulnerable if you're using a library that has the vulnerability, or the project contains vulnerable code which extracts files from an archive without necessary directory traversal validation? Okay, I'm gonna grab this so. I agree that zip slip somehow should somehow be mentioned. There's no, this isn't okay. So two, two things can go wrong. The library may be totally vulnerable and the developer may not be checking for this path. For example, I typically unzip uploaded files into a staging directory with um, OS level limits. So, I, so I'm just a staging directory. That's what I usually do at the OS level when I have to unzip stuff, which I, which I never want to do, by the way, it's a bad thing. So I'm just going to jump in, add a comment here and push this a little bit further. And little by little, the sausage is made. Folks, it's RSA for me. I got to catch a flight this morning. So there's there's me condensing my two hours of uh, my two hours of time to show you the three main projects that I work on. Right, I work on the ASVS standard. That's most of my effort. I work on the cheat sheet series, and I work on the proactive controls. These projects are all defensive in nature. Hello, breakers. This is defensive in nature. They're meant for. To help, meant to help developers write more secure code, which is my personal life mission. I love OWASP. A lot of my OWASP volunteerism is giving talks and actually working on projects. I try to keep out of other, other business. That's it for me. Do I, have a, do I have a moderator still? You do. I'm going to call it. I think that's a good summary of what I'm up to. I'm showing how the sausage is made. I'm pointing to GitHub repos in case you'd like to add a comment. Hey, hey, my European friends, thanks for being here. Thanks for caring about application security. I'm gonna go catch a flight and get, get myself to the East Coast. Go forth and write secure code. And thank you again for caring about OWASP and application security. If you have questions for me, I love questions. I'm easy to find, right? I am jim at man, manicode.com. You can also reach me for OWASP business at jim at OWASP.org. And a fun fact, manacode.com is a catch-all domain. So you can submit anything you want to me at manacode.com. Friends of mine are frequently se sending me email to very inappropriate email addresses for fun. You're welcome to do the same. So please drop me a line if you have questions about application security or questions about how you can participate in these defensive projects. I'm going to call it. I'm done for now. And thank you all so very much for your time. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. And I'm sure you've motivated a number of people here to contribute, That's myself like. included. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thanks, Jim. I'll see you next time, everybody. Take care.